Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Smart Chart webinar series focused on ICP OES and ICP MS. My name is Rena Samsu, marketing at EAG Laboratories, a Eurofins company. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items for today's event. All attendees have been muted. However, we'd still love to hear from you during today's presentation. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions panel located in the bottom right of your screen. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Dr. Karis Falco, an application scientist at EAG Laboratories, will be answering some of the questions during the presentation, and we will also collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. At the end of the webinar, a survey will pop up on your screen. Your feedback is greatly appreciated and will help us to improve our future events. I would now like to introduce our presenter, Rajiv Soman, Director of Purity Survey at EAG Laboratories. Hello, welcome to today's webinar on ICP OES and ICP MS. My name is Rajiv Soman. After having worked on the prototype Lehman Labs sequential ICP OES, unit in mid-1980s. I spent over 30 years working in the exciting fields of material sciences and analytical chemistry. I joined EAG Laboratories in 2015. During my professional career, I worked both in industry and in academia. We will start today's webinar with a brief introduction to EAG, followed by our resource tool, the Smart Chart. We will then transition to some basics of inductively coupled optical emission spectroscopy and inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. After discussing the process of chemical analysis, we will explore the principles of operation of each technique. We will share our experiences in analyzing real world samples and discuss how innovative approaches lead to solutions for materials characterization needs. We will revisit complementary techniques and discuss some strengths and limitations of ICP OES and ICP MS. Eurofins EAG Laboratories is a global scientific services company. With 16 laboratories in over 20 locations, we serve more than 4,000 clients worldwide. Our 600 plus highly educated and highly skilled employees, combined with industry leading state of the art technology equipment set, enable us to leverage the power of science and engineering to accelerate innovation to creative problem solving, objective analysis, and expert interpretation of data. We have a global ICP footprint with facilities in five locations and across three continents. The EAG smart chart is depicted below um, here. It offers a concise visual reference tool for comparing analytical techniques, permitting one to compare detection limits and analytical resolution for numerous materials characterization techniques that include evaluation of surfaces, purity surveys, and more. Each bubble or bar represents a different analytical technique. Surface analysis techniques are represented inside the box and bulk techniques are represented outside the box to the right. These techniques have a range of detection limit values, but do not provide information regarding depth. Imaging techniques are exhibited below the box. The blue bubbles represent techniques that give elemental information. In this webinar, we will focus on ICP OES and ICP MS as analytical tools in materials characterization. The useful region of ICP OES and ICP MS is listed here to the right. And you can see that the range extends from several tens of PPBs to almost 100 atomic percent by weight. Our ICP teams at five locations comprise of many scientists and experts with decades of experience in method development and validation and sample digestion strategies. Syracuse site is the leading technical hub for ICP-based chemical analyses. 
ICP OES and ICP MS instruments in Syracuse include various configurations and collectively they expand our materials characterization capabilities. Let us take a look at some of the drivers in materials characterization. Several key needs that drive this technology include the ever increasing regulatory compliance needs and the supply chain test, testing and purity certification. Impurities play a major role in the life cycle performance of materials. There is a compelling need to understand the material, leading to the information versus data paradigm. During this webinar, we will explore how ICP OES and ICP MS can provide useful solutions once combined with innovative sample preparation strategies. Our innovative approaches to problem solving are key to solving commercial challenges from concept through commercialization, as highlighted in this flow chart. Client success requires control and optimization during all steps of this flow chart, starting from research and development all the way through field failure analysis. EAG provides the knowledge and the appropriate tools for client success. ICP OES and ICP MS play a critical role in the application areas that range from environmental food and beverage testing to the bulk chemical analyses of high performance materials for accurate and precise determination of major, minor, and trace elements. At EAG, we have a comprehensive approach to problem solving and developing the analytical process. Key process steps are depicted here. The analytical process leads to an in-house developed standard protocol. Digestion strategies are developed for different samples, coupled with, coupled with method validation procedures in accordance with ASTM guidance. We develop in-house standard protocols that are consistent with quality requirements. Our accreditations and certifications include ISO 9001, ISO 17025, NATCAP, and GES 400. We will take a further look at some portions of this process. Regardless of sample preparation strategies chosen, it is important to adopt criteria during the method development phase. A number of important criteria should be considered, and they should include incorporation of internal standards, traceability of standards, spike recoveries, and two sources of independent QC recovery checks. These criteria are valid, vital to the development of in-house validated SOPs. A number of parameters for instrument performance criteria should be considered, and they are listed here. The figures of merit listed are key to evaluating any analytical instrumental technique. These include linear dynamic range estimation all the way to the robustness of the technique. Accuracy and precision are cornerstones in evaluating an analytical technique. As such, every step must be taken during the planning and execution phase. This will result superior figures of merit. Ideally, one would like to be in this quadrant where we have a high degree of accuracy and high degree of precision. Although ICP, OES, and MS are considered different analytical techniques due to the differences in how they measure elemental concentrations, they in fact share many common features. They are both referred to as solutions-based in that solid samples need to be converted to, into a solution prior to elemental analysis. This field has grown exponentially and has matured into a universally accepted analytical technique for bulk chemical analyses. This is evidenced by more than 10 major instrument manufacturers. Numeral, numerous hardware and software enhancement have been made over the years. We work closely with instrument manufacturers to improve existing capabilities. This webinar will not discuss the various instrument configurations. Rather, we will emphasize on the often overlooked yet critical steps of analysis, sample preparation strategies, method development, 
and validation parameters and developing robust SOPs that yield improved analytical figures of merit. Argon plasma is defined or described in literature as an electrical conducting mixture containing a significant concentration of cations and anions, the net charge approaching zero. Argon ions once formed in the plasma are capable of absorbing sufficient power from an external source to maintain the temperature level at which further ionization sustains the plasma. Effective introduction of sample analyte into the high temperature zone of the plasma, relatively long residence times within the plasma, and higher attainable temperatures are critical to plasma emission spectroscopic measurements. Plasmas are also considered to be clean when compared to combustion flames. A number of excitation processes occur within the argon plasma and they are listed here. These are some of the mechanisms through which energy exchange occurs between various species in plasma discharge. A schematic of a typical inductively coupled plasma is optical emission spectrometer is shown here. The sample solution is introduced with a peristaltic pump into a spray chamber with the help of a nebulizer. A portion of the aerosol from the spray chamber makes its way into the core of the argon plasma through an injector tube. Within the core of the plasma, aerosol experiences temperatures of between 4,000 to 9,000 Kelvin. The aerosol undergoes desolvation, vaporization, atomization, ionization, and excitation. Electromagnetic radiation emitted by the relaxation of excited state atoms and ions is expressed as emission signal intensities. In the radial configuration, plasma is viewed perpendicular to the longitudinal axis, and in the axial mode, it is viewed end on. The most critical component of inductively coupled plasma spectroscopies continues to be sample introduction and has been aptly described as the Achilles heel of atomic spectroscopy. A typical output from an OES measurement can be depicted here in form of wavelength versus intensity of the emission signal measurements. The signal observed at a given wavelength is characteristic of the identity of the element and the magnitude of the intensity of emission signal is a quantitative measure of the concentration of the element. Here are some limitations and solutions in ICPMS. Many of the limitations can be offset by the use of internal standards specialized sample introduction systems and the use of standard additions technique and maintaining a robust statistical process control protocol. Here is a schematic of a typical ICPMS instrument. The sample introduction portion and the plasma is similar to that in ICPOES. The argon plasma serves as source of ionization in ICPMS, unlike in the optical emission spectroscopies. The ions that are generated in the plasma are accelerated into the mass analyzer through an interface. Several instrument configurations are commercially available and they include types of reaction cells, number of quadrupole units in the analyzer and types of interfaces. A typical output from an ICPMS instrument is depicted here with mass to charge ratios on the x-axis and the signal on the y-axis. Typically, one can make measurements in the peak hopping mode. It is important to note that the signal obtained is not only indicative of the element concentration and the isotope that is measured, but also one obtains the relative abundance of measured isotopes, which is demonstrated in the lower representation in case of magnesium and silicon. While ICPMS has isobaric interferences, they can be offset by the monitoring of multiple isotopes. And there is the availability of different types of instrument configurations to eliminate interferences. 
use of several internal standards and long-term statistical process control protocols mitigate other limitations. Sample preparation is a critical step in chemical analysis. Here, we have an overview of the more common approaches to sample preparation with pre-digestion for bulk analysis on the left, strategies for surface sampling in the middle, and methods used to achieve complete digestion or dissolution of the sample on the right. Each method must be rigorously tested for efficacy and must be carried out in safe environments using tools that minimize risk of potential contamination. The combination of complete dissolution or digestion of a material and analysis by ICP-based techniques is therefore unique and extremely powerful. ICP techniques are considered among the most accurate and precise analytical techniques, not only within Eurofin's EAG's toolbox, but throughout the world of analytical chemistry. The following case studies include examples of different sample preparation strategies, ranging from the 1860s developed carrier's tube approach to the more recent microwave digestion-based ones. Elemental analyses are conducted using ICP OES and ICP MS. This first example is a well-established method of closed vessel digestion, and that was developed by our Eindhoven team. This example is based on the approach that was originally developed by George Carriers in 1860 and is still used in today. This is a testament to its elegant design. Sintered ceramics, refractory oxides, tend to be some of the most challenging sample matrices. While aggressive acid digestion strategies are necessary to completely digest the sample matrix, incorporating hydrofluoric acid can lead to either losses of analyte or precipitation of certain fluoride. Some examples of difficult to digest materials are shown in, under objectives. In this example, the challenges were to digest small sample masses or volumes with minimal contamination contribution for trace element determination. The sample that is weighed and added into a tube is transferred after sealing into a thick walled high purity quartz tube and addition of this after desired acid, the, the sealed tube is then transferred into a special heating block. This block is maintained at the desired te high temperature until sample is digested. The resulting solution can be appropriately diluted for analysis. This approach has been successfully applied for the complete digestion of LED fluorescent powders. The carrier's tube approach can also be used in combination with gravimetry to determine halogens and sulfur in organic compounds. The next case study addresses the need to serve a compliance requirement in the pharmaceutical industry and provides a solution to challenges in effective and complete sample digestion. The case study addresses the goal of the USP 232-233 criteria. High pressure digestion strategies in a pressurized microwave cavity can be used for the digestion of some organics and alloys. This has shown to be effective for complete digestion of many organics. The top photograph shows an attempt at digesting a sample at lower temperatures. While the contents upon dilution might appear clear, centrifuging the solution indicates a presence of some undigested components. The slide also shows the successful digestion of crude waste as ex exhibited by the, the photographs in the bottom of the slide. Three samples were evaluated and they include environmental crude waste and some oil samples. The, the photograph on the right exhibits a, a, a coloration after complete digestion. This blue-green coloration is due to the presence of high copper, chromium, and iron in the sludge samples. These samples can easily be analyzed by ICP-OES or ICP-MS. 
while this sample preparation approach is effective and efficient, it may not be applicable to all organic matrices. The aliphatic skeletons of some polymers and biopolymers are often hydrolytic and oxidative resistant. They can carbonize at elevated temperature in the absence of an oxidative atmosphere and can lead to residual carbon. For such matrices, incorporating a closed vessel microwave induced combustion technique can be employed. The next example demonstrates the application of microwave induced combustion technique for digestion of pharmaceutical samples. The objective here was to develop a generic sample preparation approach for determining elemental impurities in pharmaceutical products. The determination of trace elements and impurities falls under the purview of Food and Drug Administration, USP, and ICH guidelines. The MIC digestion procedure incorporates high power microwave radiation to trigger combustion of samples in an oxygen pressurized thick walled quartz container. In the subsequent refluxing cycle, further digestion of residues and analyte is accomplished. The analytes are recovered in the absorbing solvent for analysis by ICP OES and ICP MS. These techniques offer improved sensitivity, elemental specificity, and a wide linear dynamic range. This sample preparation approach ensures for a complete digestion, retention of volatiles, and no residual carbon left in the final solution. The results of analysis of four over-the-counter tablet medications is shown in the next slide. These results demonstrate successful analysis of the over-the-counter coated pharmaceutical tablet. The overall spike recoveries ranged between 100 plus or minus 5% and detection limit values as exhibited in table two to be better than 0 0.01 microgram per gram that is achieved for most class one and class two elemental impurities as listed in USP and ICA chapters. The concentrations of elemental impurities in the four tablets were well within the ICH specification limit. The spike recovery for osmium is unusually high and is suspected to be because of the formation of osmium tetroxide during digestion with nitric acid. A different digestion procedure is necessary for osmium determination. Lifetime performance and lifetime duration of fluorescent lamps are key issues for consumers. Their lifetime is mainly determined by the electrode life. In turn, the electrode lifetime is determined by amount and consumption of free barium in the emitter. Here, the objectives were to test for R&D and failure analysis aspects for fluorescent lamp, lamp lifetimes and to characterize the tungsten electrode lifetime. Often, the emitter material consists of carbonates of barium, calcium, and strontium. These carbonates decompose during the lamp production process. The formation of tungstates implies a reduction of the amount of active barium oxide in the emitter. This is an ongoing process during lamp operation. Under normal operation conditions, just before end of life, about a third of the total amount of barium can be found on the walls. Evaluating this aspect is vital during the R&D and failure analysis phase of the product. In this technique, the, 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 lamp is removed, the electrode is removed from the lamp and is treated with a mixture of chemicals. These chemicals dissolve only the reacted tungsten and not the tungsten material of the coil. Part of the glass tube around the electrode and or the electrode shield is treated with acid to analyze the amount of sputtered and or evaporated barium, calcium, strontium, and tungsten. The total amounts of barium, calcium, strontium, and reacted tungsten are determined using ICP OES. The results are shown in the next slide. The molar fractions of barium, calcium, and strontium in the original emitter 
are shown. The data also shows fractions of each of the electrode shield and the electrode of the tested bulb under different operating mode. Such data can be useful during both the R&D and failure analysis phases. This example of a case study addresses super alloys. Super alloys are high performance alloys used in aerospace, power, metal refining, and petrochemical applications where high temperature and corrosive environments are common. There is a growing demand for certified super alloy reference standards. Our ICP laboratories routinely participate in certification and round robin testing of these materials. We have developed numerous specific test protocols based on a collection of sample preparation quantitative strategies that provide accurate and precise chemical analysis of super alloys. Each super alloy has specific chemical and physical properties that is optimized for particular environments that they operate in. Alloying elements such as tungsten and molybdenum are added to improve mechanical strength. And as an example, chromium is added for high temperature corrosion resistant properties. Super alloys also have intentionally added trace elements such as rare earths in nickel-based composition. These impart oxidation resistance and long-term chemical stability of the alloy. Every alloying element can be a potential source of impurity, which can have an adverse impact on the performance and lifetime of the components. In the next slide, we will present data from analysis of a cobalt and a nickel-based alloy. The cobalt alloy is cobalt 6B and the inconel is inconel 230. The data demonstrates the excellent accuracy of the combined sample digestion and the ICP OES and ICP MS analysis of these two super alloys with certified concentrations of the same certified elements in the respective standards. Concentrations range from 50 parts per million to 59% by weight. Linear trend lines show correlation coefficient between certified and measured values and they demonstrate excellent accuracies. When combined, ICP-MS and ICP-OES can provide high accuracy and precise concentrations for many key alloying elements. Here we demonstrate operation and performance of the ICP-MS and a direct solid sampling technique for the analysis of a reference material. Glow discharge mass spectrometry, GDMS, is a widely used solid sampling technique for trace and ultra trace quantification with a high degree of precision. The comparison of the two techniques when applied to the same certified reference material exhibits a high degree of correlation between measured and certified values for several analytes. ICPMS better reproduces certified values, demonstrating a slightly lower accuracy bias. In case you have missed watching the Glow Discharge Mass Spectrometry webinar, you will get a link that you can register for to watch the Glow Discharge Mass Spectrometry webinar. Precision and accuracy of ICP OES can be improved by using an enhanced ICP protocol, which is presented in the next case study. In this case study, we will discuss a unique protocol-driven methodology to perform highly accurate compositional analysis of complex oxides. Complex oxides play increasingly important roles in high technology application areas, and as such, there is a compelling need to determine their composition to a high degree of accuracy and precision. The challenge in some of these complex compounds is it can be highlighted in a strontium barium titanate system. An acid mixture of hydrofluoric acid and nitric acid is often used to dissolve the titanate framework. 
However, in order to retain the strontium and barium ions in the solution, the fluoride ion concentration in the acid mixture must be properly balanced such that the formation of the low solubility fluoride is not kinetically favored. Similar cha challenges are encountered in digesting complex oxides such as aluminates, silicates, zirconates, and titanate families with each containing alkaline earths or rare earths. EAG Laboratories has developed specific strategies to address these challenges. Here is a depiction of complex oxides that are used in critical high technology areas. Today, our examples will include cathode precursor and hydroxyapatite. Unlike other types of sample, digestion of complex samples is accomplished in two steps. And the first step would it could include dilution or dissolution of the matrix, followed by a second step that includes solvation and of the released ions. Aggressive acid digestion can often be necessary, and they could include heating at temperature between 200 and 250 degrees Celsius at pressures of 40 to 80 bar for up to 24 hours to get these materials in solution. Incorporating higher temperatures and pressures have shown to shorten sample digestion times. These conditions enable EAG laboratories to digest some of the most complex materials that are typically difficult to completely digest by other traditional techniques. The specific example we would look at is a lithium cobaltate sample. Layered lithium excess transition metal oxides are most important cathode precursors for lithium ion batteries. A proper excess amount of lithium is known to stabilize the layered structure during the lithiation, delithiation cycle of the battery. Defect engineering by doping also becomes an important means for tuning properties of complex oxides. In an effort to address cycling stability of lithium ion batteries, scientists from Argonne National Laboratory had discovered doping a few percentage of lithium in excess to the stoichiometric ratio can dramatically improve the long-term stability, which subsequently has revolutionized the lithium-ion battery industry. This table summarizes the application of our high-performance ICP OES approach for the analysis of this lithium cobaltate sample. The expanded uncertainties of measurement are 0.87% relative and 0.23% relative for lithium and cobalt, respectively. In this case, it is estimated that there is a 1.2% atom deficiency of lithium in the investigated sample. High performance ICP OES technique has been used to accurately assess the lithium to transition metal ratios and the quantification of many lithium excess LTMO precursors. The second example we will take a look at in complex oxides is that of hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is a primary mineral component of bone and teeth, and it is intended to impart hardness and strength. Structural characterization requirements of hydroxyapatite and beta tricalcium phosphate coatings and powders has been specified in FDA guidance document and various ASTM standards. As bioceramic precursors, the stoichiometric calcium to phosphorus ratio in hydroxyapatite is 1.67, which leads to an overall good mechanical properties in terms of hardness and fracture toughness. In practice, large variation in composition exists 
And as a matter of fact, hydroxyapatite can be highly non-stoichiometric solid. Thus, it is important to develop methodology that can accurately evaluate calcium to phosphorus ratio. Here is a summary of results obtained for the analysis of hydroxyapatite sample using our high-pressure ICP-OES approach. The expanded uncertainties for calcium and phosphorus measurements are both within 1% relative at 95% confidence level. Such tight uncertainty of measurement enables rigorous composition checks of calcium to phosphorus ratios of incoming hydroxyapatite and beta tricalcium phosphate feedstocks. In this particular case, the determined calcium to phosphorus ratio is 1.61, indicative of calcium deficiency in this particular lot of hydroxyapatite. Based on the expanded uncertainty values shown in this table, the calcium phosphorus ratio in this sample is statistically different than that found in a stoichiometric composition. A key enabler of high performance ICP OES is the invention of a drift correction procedure that turns out to be a major source of uncertainty in classical ICP OES analyses. Here in this slide, we show an example of the drift pattern over the duration of the determination of lithium in a lithium manganate cathode precursor. During this high performance ICP OES analysis, the fitted equation seen at the top is used to correct for instrument drift at each measurement point during the analysis cycle. The combined uncertainties is calculated by errors from measuring standard reference material solutions, errors contributions from measuring known sample solutions, and those from certified values of standard reference materials. EAG's high performance ICP OES protocol builds on the traditional NIST procedure to further improve the uncertainty of measurement. Exact matching of the analyte ma mass fraction, internal standard mass fraction, and matrix match standards is taken into account. A gravimetric approach to determining mass fractions is employed, and multiple replicates, each between 100 to 500 milligrams each, is used during this anal analysis protocol. So let us take a look at standard ICP OES versus the high performance ICP OES approach that is developed on as an enhancement to the NIST approach. There are several advantages of incorporating high performance ICP OES. The main contributions to the higher expanded uncertainties in conventional ICP OES result from several sources and can range between three to 5%. High performance ICP OES protocol narrows the expanded uncertainties to between 0.3 to 1% relative, which is almost an order of magnitude better. All results in our high performance ICP OES measurements are traceable to NIST standards. As a relative method, the protocol involves computing ratios of analytes and the, in the sample and the SRM, each incorporating an internal standard. The mass fraction of the analyte is also computed. And a calibration model is used to determine the composition of the sample. Incorporation of gravimetric approach coupled with internal standard higher number of replicates and matrix match standards contributes to the improvement in the expanded uncertainty values. This technique has been successfully employed by EAG laboratories in production control 
and certification of advanced alloys, sputter targets, and other complex materials. In summary, let us revisit the strengths and challenges of ICP OES and ICP MS based elemental analysis techniques. While they are universally accepted as bulk chemical analysis techniques for determination of majors, minors, trace, and ultra trace level elements, and they are also accepted due to the fact that they have a high degree of accuracy and precision. However, Two major limitations include the inability of these techniques to provide spatial information of a solid and the difficulty in determining glass forming, gas forming elements. Let us address some of the limitations by looking at some complementary techniques. As seen in the previous slide, the two major limitations can be solved by using some complementary techniques that are also available within the EAG laboratories toolbox. And they include X-ray fluorescence, glow discharge mass spectrometry, laser ablation ICPMS, and LIBS. ETV ICPMS can also provide very good complementary information. So why choose EAG? There are several reasons. The most important being client confidentiality is core to our business. We are a global leader for materials testing services with a broad range of instruments and expertise that leave us poised to take on even the most challenging materials and engineering related issues. We have an extensive knowledge base and skilled expertise that enables us to offer multidisciplinary approaches that can be scaled to client-specific needs. Finally, in light of the recent pandemic that is affecting us all, EAG Laboratories is committed to the safety of our staff and clients. Worldwide, we have complied with the latest COVID-19 regulations from state and local governments, as well as the CDC, all of our locations throughout the world remain open, but we may have some limitations on customer visit. We encourage you to discuss your options with our sales representatives. <music>